came in here loud, being myself, acting goofy, but there are certain spaces where I feel like people look at me like, why is she doing too much? My name is Amber Paris. I'm from New York City and um, lived in Amsterdam for three years now. I am currently diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia. Being diagnosed has helped me feel more affirmed in the things I used to feel frustrated about or insecure about. So I think it's just definitely built some confidence. My advice would be take your time in the research and learning. I think we can get really excited but eager for answers that we kind of like just rush to an answer, but the reality is there isn't like one day you wake up and okay, clicks again. It's gonna be an ongoing journey with reading and speaking with people, right? So first step, definitely take your time, but also find people to talk to, to feel like you're seen and you're heard. There's a song by Olivia Dean called Everybody's Crazy. And she says, um, everybody's crazy. And I love that you know that too. When somebody else, when you can like finally express something that you thought that only you understood or a frustration only you thought you experienced, and you speak to somebody else who also has ADHD or dyslexia, the relief is insane. It's so comforting. And I don't think you get that same relief from a doctor, but when it comes from a friend or a friend, you know, friend to be, it really helps the journey coming ahead a lot better. I feel like having ADD impacts my um, love life and like how I navigate intimate relationships. Um, I don't really understand why yet, but I feel like as I'm learning more about myself, I'm seeing that how I see the world and how I think of the world and how I think of people, it's really important that the person I'm intimate with can also understand that connect, we can connect on that. And if we can't, then intimacy only goes so far, right? The standards, the expectations for girls is so different, are so different. I think people expect boys to be um, more hyperactive, or like, oh, that's just boys being boys, right? But when the girls do it, something is wrong with her. Why is she acting this way? And I saw my sister actually being um, um, punished for that. So that's when I learned, okay, shit, don't act out. You have to hide these impulses. So I sat quietly. But there was a storm inside, let me tell you. So either saying, oh, look at your Ralph, my sister, acting crazy, da, da, da. You need to be more like her. She's calm. I am not calm. I'm just hiding from you because I'm scared to be punished. Because if I act like that, I will be set back a grade, right? If I act like that, I'm going to be labeled all these other things, right? So I hid a lot of my impulses so that I could be more calm and pretty and relaxed. And even though I've, in hindsight, I know better now, I still sometimes feel judged when I act a bit, what's the word, like sporadic. Like I came in here loud, being myself, acting goofy, but there are certain spaces where I feel like people look at me like, why is she doing too much? Right, because the calm girls are the ones who are attractive. You gotta be cute. <laughs> Being a creative, I mean, I think everyone's a creative, right? Like, so it's funny that you say that. But being an active creative, a working creative, it's so beautiful when you start to learn how your brain works and how to use that as a superpower because it transforms your art in such a beautiful way. And everyone wants to figure out what their signature is, right? Understand your brain and you'll find your signature. But when you actually allow yourself to express the frustrations that come with having dyslexia or having ADHD, you're making some dope shit. Because you're making things that some people, one, can't understand, but also you're using your brain in the way that it's meant to be used, right? You're figuring out how you're connecting the dots, the colors that you're seeing other people can't see, the stories you're making that other people don't understand yet. Like you're telling a story that needs to be told because you're you're, you're actually operating within your space, right? And when I started to write in that way and paint in that way and dance in that way, my reasons for creating changed. And that actually made me more bold to say that I am an artist because I didn't say that 10 years ago, right? It's crucial that neurodivergency is seen as a superpower because it's, 
it allows some of the smartest, most creative, most critical thinking humans in this world to actually walk in their power and authenticity. That serves the people around them. It's not just for us. It's so we can do our jobs better, so we can be better artists, so we can be better friends, be a better boss, a better manager.